Over the years, when using Final Cut Pro, there have been times when I've wanted to shake my computer out of pure frustration. You too, I assume. And if not, after hearing some of these tips, you're gonna wanna shake your computer out of frustration for not knowing them sooner. I recently learned this first one from a friend and fellow FCP YouTuber, Brad West. I'm actually a little embarrassed that I didn't know this, and I'm shocked at how simple it is. So, let's say you're working on this section of your timeline, and you realize that you would like to use a sound effect or maybe a title that you've already used earlier in the project. You scroll to find that area that has the element that you need, or you press Shift-Z to fit your entire timeline into view, if that makes finding it easier, you copy it and you make the journey back to where your playhead is. And for so long, I thought this was just the way it was and how it goes. But if you simply put your cursor above the timeline, it can't be on your timeline, it has to be above, and you press the right arrow key, Final Cut will instantly snap to where your playhead is and you can then immediately paste that thing that you went to go find. You might get annoyed at how when you try to add a transition between two clips, you get this pop-up. For those starting out in the software, this is telling you that the transition needs more footage to work with, and since this is the beginning of the clip, as we can see by the fact that this edge is red, you have no more footage before this point. So you could trim the clip, but you may want the beginning part of this clip. So here's the solution that I came up with many years ago. Usually I pop this bad boy out of our primary storyline by pressing Option, Command, and Up arrow. And by the way, like a lot of shortcuts, if you can't remember the keys, usually you can find a button for it. So just control, right click your clip and hit lift from storyline. And that's gonna leave this empty gap clip for us with the exact length of the clip, which will come in handy in a second. And all you'll do is head to the beginning of your clip and press shift H. This creates what's called a hold frame which is basically a pause in your footage. You can extend this out a bit more just to be sure that the transition has enough footage to work with. Line up the end of the clip with the end of the gap clip. Trim off the beginning by dragging in or pressing Option and left bracket. And press Option, Command and down arrow this time to blast this back into the primary storyline. Now you can add your transition without issues because it's basically pulling from that paused footage. And for those of you who are wondering, usually with most transitions, you can't tell that the transition is working on footage that's been paused. If you have a mess of things on your timeline and you wanna tidy them up into one clip, maybe you wanna add an effect to all of these layers, you can select everything, press option G, and now you'll have all of the elements into one clip. Compound clips are great. They act as like a little house for all of your media that you selected. And they're handy for more than just organization as well, but there are some things about them that might frustrate you. For one, you may wanna know how to see all those elements again. Just double click the compound clip. Then you may get frustrated at how now you can't see your main timeline. Just press this button to snap out of it. You might get mad at how you can't extend the compound clip, or maybe how you can't add a transition to it. Just double click to enter the compound clip, extend the media in that compound clip, back out of it by pressing that button again, and now you can extend or add that transition. And lastly, you may not even want that compound clip anymore, but now you feel like you're stuck with it. Well, you're not. Go to clip and hit break apart clip items, or press the shortcut shift command G. You might be wondering why your libraries are so dang large in size. There might not even be that much media in them. If you go to your settings or press command and comma and you go to playback and you see this button pressed, turn it off. This has Final Cut pretty much constantly rendering your timeline, which causes large render files to build up in your library and it slows down your computer. If you do ever need a section of your timeline to play out smoother, first and foremost, make sure you have better performance selected by going to your view tab. But second, you can just select that area and press Ctrl R to render just that section. Or you can transcode your media so your timeline will play back smoother. After you're done with the project, just click on your library, go to File, Delete Generated Library Files, and select everything. And no, deleting these files isn't something that you'll never get back. You can always retranscode or re-render at any time if you need to in the future. And look at this difference in what that did for our library size. 
This is annoying, right? You want to extend out the start of this clip, but this sound effect, which is supposed to be lined up with this overlay transition, is moving with it. This little bar right here is telling you that this sound effect is attached to this clip. So to have it attached to this clip so it doesn't move, make sure the sound effect is selected and just hold the Option and Command key and click where you want that new bar to be attached to. But there's an even simpler solution that comes in handy for a bunch of other different scenarios. Hold this key on your keyboard when you drag the start of your clip out and any connected media will stay in the same spot. It's called the Grov key, also known as the tilde key. And if you didn't know about it, it's about time you do. Normally, performing a slip edit by pressing T to bring up your trim tool and dragging the clip will move the media that's attached to it. But if you hold the Grov key when doing this, the media will stay in the same spot. If you want to lift a clip from the primary storyline, typically it'll try and drag everything with it. But just by holding the Grov key and dragging the clip out, all the connected media will stay in the same spot. It's the same with deleting a clip. Typically, deleting a clip will delete all the attached media with it. But just by holding this key when pressing delete, you can keep all the media attached. Do me a solid though, hit that subscribe button. It'll help me to continue to make these free tutorials on the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day.